Our next guest is an Academy Award and Grammy winner, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee and former frontman of Talking Heads. His latest work, Here Lies Love, is playing at the Broadway Theater on Broadway. Please welcome back to the show our friend David Byrne. <laughs> Glad to be here. And I know uh, every time you're here, and it's the way you get everywhere in New York City, you biked here today. Yeah, it's locked outside. You, so you, David Byrne, uh, biked to 30 Rock, and then you just locked it outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how, how recognizable are you to people as David Byrne on a bike? Most of the time, no, but somehow they know when I'm coming to do this show. Yes, interesting. Because you wear a helmet, obviously. You play it Most safe. of the time, yeah. Okay, most of the time. Yeah, most. Have you, uh, is, is the biking a new thing or have you always been a New York City biker? I've been doing it for a long time. Used to live on the Lower East Side back in the, yeah. a long time ago. Cab, there were hardly any cabs down there. Gotcha. Hardly any cabs in Soho. It was like this weird, dangerous, whatever. So was that a necessity that you were a biker? It was kind of, a, yeah, it became really practical. And it's become safer. I think New York City has gotten a little bit better for bikers, but yeah. not entirely safe. Not entirely. I wouldn't go to a friend and say, who's never done it and say, oh, just go ahead, just go ahead, just jump in there. Because <laughs> you, I know when you went on tour, uh, uh, you and your cast uh, would bike uh, in other cities. Yeah. So yeah it, it must be nice, there, there must be some American cities where you go, oh, one day, wouldn't it be great if New York was like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, mean, there, uh, Austin has, amazingly, has yep. incredible bike lanes, Portland, of course, uh, Portlandia. Yes, yeah. lots of bike lanes. <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, congratulations, your second Broadway show. Uh, yes, it, well, yes it is. As a guy who used to bike around the Lower East Side, did you ever think you'd have two Broadway shows? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is based on an album you did with uh, Fat Boy Slim. It is a, uh, uh, it's about Imelda Marcos, the uh, wife of the former uh, um, dictator in the Philippines. Exactly. And what made you first think that this would be a good topic for uh, of music. <laughs> Just cried out to me, yes. Uh, no. I'd, I'd been to, uh, way back in the day, I'd been to some discos, and I, but I usually just went to see if there was a musical act performing. And the acts who had club hits in those days would come into the disco, stand on a little platform, put in a tape that had their backing tracks of their song, and just sing their two hits, and they'd be gone. And I thought, but what if they could do more? What if you could do a whole you know, evening and tell a story that way while the audience is dancing? I like the idea of what if you can have an, uh, an audience that's only half paying attention? Yeah. But the, <laughs> <laughs> somehow that appealed to me. <laughs> and, but because I thought they, they'll, they'll absorb it. They'll absorb the story. They don't have to be just paying attention every second. Put that in my back pocket, and then years later, I read that uh, Amelda Marcos uh, loved going to clubs. She had a mirror ball installed in her New York townhouse, mm -hmm. which we don't all have. No, we don't all have. No. Not, not all. We of us. all should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I googled that up and saw a, a video of her dancing under her home mirror ball with uh, Khashoggi, the arms dealer. Wow. And, yeah, and I thought. Ah, uh, she lives in this world that I've been thinking about if there could be a show that way. And look who she's dancing with. There's a story here. <laughs> yeah. So it's fair. so it just clicks together like that. This yeah, so I thing. can bring these two ideas together, these two, two things together, and let's see what happens. Let's see if there's a story. And again, so I'm going to show a photo. This is a Broadway uh, theater uh, here in New York City. Uh, you've taken out all the seats so that the audience uh, on the ground floor there uh, in the orchestra area just sort of dances throughout the course of the show. Yes, yeah, so we actually, I mean, okay, if you don't want to dance, you don't have to. There are seats. Yes. There are seats. There's, like, nice balcony seats, so you, yes, you don't that. have to be with this. But my dream came true, and I could do a show where a good portion of the audience is... Yeah. Able to dance. It must make you so happy to see that this idea you had uh, all those years ago is paying off. And it's, a, it's an entirely Filipino cast. That must be an exciting thing to put That's together very as exciting. well. They're kind of telling their own, the story of their own country. Uh-huh. And do you feel like, uh, I mean, obviously, people who buy Broadway tickets, you know, they maybe 
aren't expecting something like this. Do you feel like you've prepared them enough for what they're about to walk in for? I hope so. I hope when they go to buy the tickets, they read the thing that says, it's, if you buy a ticket on the dance floor, you will be standing for an hour and a half. But you're not going to miss anything. It's all happening all around you. But if you want to see, there's lots of ways to, seat as, to sit as well. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I, I go about once a week. That's exciting. And I usually go on the dance floor because I just, I feel like I'm immersed, I'm in it then. Well, I feel like you are someone who has always seemed uh, uh, to be taken over by uh, music and wanted to dance. I always wanted to. Yeah. Yes. That's why we, <laughs> that's why we never play music during the interviews because we're afraid you'll just wander off, yeah. <laughs> do you, I always ask people like this, especially uh, ones who've had such long iconic careers, what, do you ever hear when you're at a cafe or you know, in a car, do you ever hear your music? And, and what is your reaction when you hear uh, songs of yours? Uh, I, if I heard it, Sometimes friends point it out. I don't notice. Really? I don't notice. I have it tuned out. Uh, it's like another part of my brain, or another, for musicians, they start to they listen to music in a different way. And my friends will point, David, 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 listen to that. Do you know who that is? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like they're giving you an Alzheimer's test. <laughs> 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 now, uh, I, this uh, we've talked about this before. Um, uh, for my money, one of the best, uh, the greatest concert uh, movie of all time, uh, Stop Making Sense, uh, was just re-released. They were showing it in theaters. Remastered. Thank you! And you went, you watched it. Oh, I've watched it, yeah, now, a few times during the opening. That was and, a couple uh, weeks But ago. how many years had it been since you'd seen it? Uh, it had been at least 10 years, maybe 15, since I'd seen it projected on a screen. Uh, and when it got... Reprinted from the master, from the negative, and the remixed, and everything. I obviously went to a screening, and I thought, "Wow, this looks great. It sounds great." But who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's a very serious young man. <laughs> He's very intent. Uh, is he having any fun? <laughs> and. <laughs> It is, I will say, because obviously I, I've met uh, this era, David Byrne is who I met, and you were not who I thought you'd be based on that era, David Byrne, who seemed like he had a sense of humor because there was something so theatrical about the, the film and the performance that I, you know, uh, look, giant suit, that's really funny. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. I feel like a serious guy doesn't wear a giant suit unless he knows there's something funny yes. about it. Um, but were you having fun? Like when you, I mean, I know it doesn't look, but was your memory of it before you saw it, do you think, oh my God, that was so much fun to do? Uh, yes, at the end, the, as the show progresses, I do loosen up and yes. I'm having fun and the music is just, I'm just carried away by it. So yes, I am having fun, but I'm also, like a lot of performers, I'm thinking, okay, what do I do next? What happens next? Where am I supposed to be? Uh, what, what's going on? Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of that going on. And was it different? Was there a heightened sense of that because you knew this time we're putting it on film? Obviously, you've performed those songs before, but we, did you know the whole time this, there's cameras here? This is the one for... <sighs> uh, yeah, but then after a while, you have to just kind of go yeah, with it. You just have yeah. to go, like, we're doing a show. I'm playing to the audience, not to the cameras. Yeah. We, uh, we did an episode uh, based on this uh, starring Fred Armisen. Fred, oh. Fred wrote it called Final Transmission. And did you know... Uh, so here's you guys, and uh, and then here's uh, Fred and uh, Bill Hader, and uh, and uh, there's my Rudolph, there's Bill Hader. Did you know Fred had a David Byrne impression? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> but I, I I found out by accident. I went to a fairly small club down downtown to see a musical act at one point, uh, and Fred was the opening act, and I'm there in the club and I'm watching him do me. And I, so, by the way, so doing comedy am, before a music show is one of the hardest things in the world. The only person I've ever seen do it well is Fred. Fred can do Because it. Fred does, he is a musician as well. Yeah. And so Fred does exactly what a music crowd wants to see. Because a com if you went to a comedy club and did a David Byrne impression, it might be a crazy bad idea. But you do a David Byrne impression in a comedy show, at a rock show, it might actually work. But he didn't know you were there? He did other things too, but he didn't know I was there. I'm watching and I'm thinking, he's doing me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's good at it. <laughs> uh, after the thing, he didn't know I was there. Yeah. He came out, I'm still in the audience, he goes, David, I'm really sorry. I, <laughs> I hope that didn't bother you too much. 
No, I just thought that it was I, amazing. You should have told him, like, one of my friends called me and told me you were doing it, and I came down <laughs> to confront you. Um, uh, well, uh, Fred is not alone. I, uh, we're all uh, such huge uh, fans of yours. It was so cool to pay homage to that wonderful film, and I'm so glad people could see it again, and it's just so lovely to have you here. Thank Two you. Broadway shows. Thank You're you. You're finally Woo making good. You're finally oh making God. good. <laughs> David Byrne, everybody. Here lies love. It's exceptional. It's playing at the Broadway Theater. We'll be right back with more Late Night.